<laughs> I muted myself. Alright, welcome back everybody. This is going to be game two of the grand finals of the UGC League Western Invite uh, Division. This is uh, going to be a one hell of a series. Uh, I hope $500 on the line for the winning team. Uh, game number one looked to be a pretty hefty stump from uh, Tung Fu North America. But that said, they did uh, kind of snowball out of control with an IO Tiny. And once that kind of gets on the field, it's uh, really hard to stop. So, um, you know, no, nothing taken away from uh, Band of Misfits. They're still an amazing team, and I think they've uh, definitely got weight in this series. I don't think that game one is a true indicator of the... Uh, uh, skill comparison that we're going to be seeing in this matchup. But anyways, uh, draft is loading in right now, so let's pop over there and check it out. This is going to be game two of our grand final best of five series. Uh, there we go. Aha. Missing my buttons. Oh. What? There we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, Exploit just freaked out on me for a second. It was showing me a black screen. I was like, what did I do? But no. We're good, we're good. Into the draft we go. Tong Fu North America have opted to take the Radiant side, or uh, sorry, the Dire side, and uh, actually, sorry, reversal. Band of Misfits chose to take Radiant, and uh, Tong Fu chose to take first pick. So, um, potentially no IO Tiny for them this time. They won't have the uh, two hero selection advantage, but uh, Band of Misfits, we'll see what they do. They might even ban out the IO if they're scared of it this game. Uh, when a team is good at running an IO with anything, it's, uh, it becomes a very scary issue, and uh, yeah, once again, uh, as I said there, they're going to ban out the uh, IO in the first phase, so no potential for that uh, global combo yet again, and Tong is going to be forced to uh, play a bit of a different game than they uh, played in game number one, so interesting to see how this, it'll be interesting to see how this game plays out. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Shadow Fiend was the first band for uh, Tong Fu. Actually, it was the first band for Band of Misfits last time. So uh, Tong Fu also thinking that it is equally strong and getting rid of it. Um, I'm actually not sure how uh, how well Shadow Fiend fares in this current meta. I mean, they made a lot of changes that really hurt the hero. They increased the mana cost on Rays. Um, they reduced the amount of armor that uh, that Shadow Fiend has at low levels. Uh, well, his, his base armor. Um, and then they added the magic resist aura to stacked camps. And they reduced the amount of mana that a bottle gives you. So, Shadow Fiend had like four different parts of him nerfed in uh, in the entirety of the patch. So, I'm not sure that uh, he's as great a hero as people give him credit for nowadays anyways. But, we'll see if he ever gets through. I mean, I'm sure that Shadow Fiend can still take over a game if he uh, lanes well. He still does a lot of damage with those raises when he lands them. So... Anyways, Gyrocopter and the Bane going to be the next two bands out there. So Tong Fu making sure that Band of Misfits does not uh, get to secure that uh, Bane for themselves. Or uh, secure that uh, Gyrocopter for themselves that they did in the uh, other game. Gyro just never really got a chance to come online. I mean, it just got to the point where that IO Tiny was so out of control that anytime KVH saw someone, they were dead. And uh, so Gyro really didn't get to utilize whatever farm he had in that safe lane. Um, and of course, there was that completely just... That, that druid that was just completely out of the game just farming all game long never even made his presence known i mean he knocked he knocked doors on a couple of towers but really didn't do all that much and uh the tiny just ran the show but anyways tong fu gonna open this up with a queen of pain um i've seen kvh's queen of pain before it is pretty damn solid so uh we'll see how that plays out throughout the course of this game but uh, a little bit more of a traditional mid for band of misfits to uh, uh fight up against and they're going to answer that with an ember spirit so potentially a mid ember spirit might go safe lane but i think ember fares pretty darn well against uh quap if uh, given the opportunity on mid but oracle this is going to be the first game of oracle i've ever casted and i still don't know what the hell that hero does so <laughs> this will be a fun one but uh yeah oracle definitely an interesting hero uh definitely works pretty well against darkseer that snare just does wonders against him uh ember spirit a little less so as uh, ember can always zip Five away or uh, even dodge the uh, uh dodge that snare from landing with the sleight of fist so um i think ember should do just fine and uh actually interesting interactions there because uh whenever that uh fortune's end drops onto the ember spirit because it is magical damage um oh sorry wait uh yeah, the Purifying Flames. That's the one I'm looking for. 
yeah, like I said, I don't know his spells as well as I should. But uh, Purifying Flames, because it's magical damage, if you throw it out onto an Ember Spirit that has the shield up, the damage is pretty much entirely negated, and then it's just a heal. So it's going to be really hard for uh, Oracle to use his spells on that Ember Spirit in an efficient way. So I don't know if that's the greatest pick against Ember, but Darkseer will definitely have a hard time in lane, especially if that Oracle is uh, supporting against him. Undying going to be the ban out here by uh, Tong Fu, so fearing that being on the board, uh, Ban of Misfits did run it in game number one, but uh, it was Five not a great addition to, to the draft. Uh, he kind of just sat mid and tried to bully the IO Tiny, but kept getting tossed back under the tower, Reserve and uh, once uh, Undying gets behind on levels, that is just problems all around, so doesn't end up... Uh, didn't end up doing much in game number one, but uh, Tong Fu is still aware that it could be uh, relevant in game number two and making sure that that is out of the draft. So, team's taking their time, dipping into the reserve time for the second set of bans here, really thinking about what they want to deal with here. Um, that Oracle has been a very popular combo with Huskar in pubs previously. Um, however, Huskar did eat a lot of nerfs that pretty much put him right in the ground. Um, but uh, still pretty potent hero if he can uh, have a team to keep him alive. So um, I would be surprised if Band of Misfits doesn't ban out the uh, Huskar here, but uh, who knows? I, I might just be talking out my ass. I, uh, I'm not sure the extent at which Huskar's uh, nerf has hit him. Uh, I haven't seen him in any games since, uh, since the change, so... Ten seconds remaining. Bounty Hunter going to be uh, banned out by Tong Fu once again. I think they banned that in game number one Five as well. So just kind of fearing remaining. the uh, that global roaming presence from the Bounty Hunter, and uh, understandably so. Dazzle Radiant banned out by uh, Band of Misfits. So uh, instead of going for the Huskar, they're just going to ban out more heals, which uh, obviously combo very very well with the Oracle um, because of the way his. Uh, uh, his false promise works the more heals that you can have on a player during the uh, duration of that uh, uh, of that buff the better off the hero will do like for example in the example of a huskar if you can get him down to really low give him the false promise and then drop a few uh, heals on him he's gonna end up being uh, uh, being up a few hundred life points after the uh, duration of that and that just makes him all the more scary but uh, tuscar is gonna be the pickup here but man of misfits so a little bit more stun, a little bit more lockdown, and uh, probably going to be played in a little bit more of a roaming supporty role. But uh, yeah, curious to see what they do with this. They've got the Dark Seer already, and uh, they kind of did this in game number one where they had the Dark Seer for the off lane, but then they had a hero that just kind of went, or they, another kind of off lane ish hero like the Tusk. Uh, they had that in the form of the Undying, but I'm curious to see what the Tusk will do, whether he'll sit mid and help out the Ember, or whether he'll just be uh, sitting in the safe lane playing as kind of a support role, or whether he'll be, you know, duo off laning with the Darkseer. Uh, the duo lane between these two is actually pretty potent. If you throw on that uh, cert, uh, that uh, Ion Shell onto the Tusk um, and give him a Snowball in, he can do a lot of damage to a hero very, very quickly, so... Something to uh, keep an eye out for, but Slardar going to be the answer from Tong Fu, and uh, I think I agree with this. Uh, Slardar does really, really well at dealing with those Tusk snowballs. If uh, Tusk brings in a couple of heroes, there's always that slithering crush, and Tusk can usually, or, and uh, Slardar can usually dash away from uh, whatever ice shards he gets caught in with uh, the sprint. So. Pretty good answer there, and of course when he has the Blink Dagger, it'll do a really good job at locking down the Ember Spirit and the Darkseer. Both heroes that have good escapes, but they have a little bit of a cast time associated with uh, getting those escapes off, whether it's uh, casting Surge or uh, you know jumping away to a Remnant or something. So I can jump in and get that Crush off right away. It's, uh, it's relatively easy to follow that up with a uh, Queen of Pain Orchid or an Oracle Snare or something of this sort. Something interesting to note with uh, Fortune's End, the uh, charge up time that you have to use to uh, make that spell land um, is a full 2.5 seconds, but uh, that only increases the uh, duration of the snare, not the damage. So um, if you're playing an oracle in a, uh, in a, well, if you have the opportunity to farm as an oracle, you can just spam that off right away um, after 0.5 seconds and uh, use it for the damage, which... Uh, Quite often is something you want to do, but uh, Juggernaut and Keeper of the Light, the next two pickups here, and I'm curious to see how this Juggernaut's going to be played with Tong Fu. This will probably be in the safe lane with the Oracle. They'll, they'll want to get that uh, snare combination up with the uh, Juggernaut spin, and of course that Slardar will probably go over towards the off lane. So Tong Fu probably looking for a uh, four position that they can uh, put with the Slardar to kind of abuse the safe lane of Band of Misfits. But uh, Band of Misfits, I'm curious what they want to do with their draft here. They have that Ember Spirit, and I think it's probably going to be going mid, so they're going to be looking for safe lane carry here. So 
something that can deal with a Slardar plus one, um, which there's only a few heroes that are actually uh, brawly enough in the early game to deal with something like that. So um, I'm trying to think of what uh, what they might choose, but uh, they've only got a couple seconds, and it's going to be an Invoker. So this will probably be an Invoker mid. They're going to send the Ember Spirit down towards the safe lane, and Ember Spirit's a pretty good defensive hero. It's very hard to kill him early on, um, but that said, he... Uh, he does suffer if he doesn't have a lack of farm so even if you can just choke him off of his farm ember has a much harder time coming back into the game but lich is going to be the uh, uh next pick up here by tong fu north america and that's probably going to be run with the uh, slardar i was mentioning that uh, earlier they're going to pick up another support probably to put with the slardar in the off lane and abuse that ember spirit and lich does that perfectly you get that uh, sacrifice to kind of keep the xp on your side of the uh, uh, on your side of the field and of course you can always just burst down the uh, heroes on the enemy team and that slow um will do very well in the team fights to come anyways let's get uh, to the game introducing the teams here we got uh, shanks gonna be playing on that juggernaut stan king on the oracle kvh on the mid queen of pain uh tuboshu on the lich and yish on the slardar over on the side of uh, Band of Misfits, we've got Mai Hyun going to be playing the Ember Spirit towards the safe lane. Straylock on the Keeper of the Light. Echo on the Darkseer. Reaper on the Tusk. And KKY Baby on the Invoker. So, having a little bit of a pause here. Not sure what the reasoning is, but I'm sure we'll be underway in only a few seconds. So, let's uh, just the overlay here. There we go. Try to not forget that. Joining me today on stats is the lovely Lurkadip from the Standard Deviant Stats Group. Uh, she'll be throwing up those stats pop-ups throughout the course of the game, so keep an eye out for those. Going to be some interesting stuff popping up for you guys. Go is the call, and it looks like our game is going to be underway. spot up here smoke is on oracle already and uh, smoke only costing 50 gold now it's very easy to uh, pick one up as a support early on you used to kind of have to decide whether or not that was going to be part of your starting build you'd have to think about it oh maybe we should go for a smoke maybe not but you don't really have to make that distinction anymore you can kind of just grab it and go um now this uh, oracle starting with boots kind of tells me that he wants to be roaming a lot more kind of hitting mid a little bit hitting uh hitting the off lane and uh just kind of bopping around the map he's got two wars that were both purchased by the lich and given to him instead but uh quick aggressive ward placement gonna be uh, out here and the dark seer curious to see what he's doing he's kind of just sitting up on this cliff scouting things out not dropping his ward quite yet though and uh, will make his way down towards the river so uh, no aggressive wards going out uh, to block the pull or anything from echo i think he realizes that there's more than likely going to be a uh, duo safe or a uh, duo offlane scenario which means that there's uh, less of a chance of him needing to block that pull the pull won't matter as much for his offlane Shoutouts to Aaron from uh, the entirety of this game. So Aaron, if you're watching, shout out to you. Sounds like a very special young woman? Question mark. I get the way it's spelled implies woman. I know some male Aarons though, so I'm not gonna make any uh, implications. Anyways, Invoker going to head over towards the mid lane. He's using that uh, Bounty Rune Gold to buy himself a salve and bring that out to him. He has started with a Fairy Fire and a full Null Talisman, so he's uh, got about 50 last hit damage, which is more than most Invokers usually have, so um, playing that out really well. And he is going to start with Exhort, so that damage will go up from there to almost 61, so Invoker now actually uh, has a chance to compete with Queen of Pain on last hits, who still has a, a pretty good base damage advantage of uh, 3. But first and I goes to the Invoker in this mid matchup will be Pretty interesting to watch. KKY is starting it out pretty well, but uh, we'll get more and more interesting as the match goes on. If you uh, don't go for a lot of points in Q as the Invoker, you're very susceptible to getting uh, bursted down by uh, the dagger from that Queen of... Or not bursted down, but worn down by that uh, dagger on Queen of Pain, so you have to watch out for that. Anyways, up on top lane, looks like a uh, snare landed and the spin comes out from Shanks, and that's going to be the south popped out on the Darkseer. Um, but the Ion Shells are going to be uh, running rampant up here in the... Tusk Darkseer combo is going to be really obnoxious, but for now, it's doing all right. Um, yeah, Juggernaut is dealing with that just fine. Backs himself up, not having to pop himself quite yet. Um, but he doesn't have mana for another Blade Fury in quite a while. And, uh, oh boy, this could be trouble for uh, Reaper here, as he's finding himself uh, caught out by his own Ice Shards. He's going to try to run away here, but uh, can they catch up to him? He's going to pop off that Fairy Fire so he doesn't drop one auto attack. One more, and Oracle, with that beautifully uh, beautifully low base attack time, is going to secure himself a kill. Uh, 
But yeah, two points and dagger up on KVH, as I was talking about. Um, going for a 1-1-1 one, one, one build on the Invoker here, going for that Alacrity Cold Snap. It uh, is a really good build for damage, but it doesn't offer you the sustain. I mean, uh, with uh, only the one point up in Quas, you've only got the 4.1 uh, health regen, which is just just not enough to uh, outdo this dagger. So the KVH can uh, continue to make these engagements go his way. Oh, this could actually be a kill here. KVH wants to be ballsy. Sunstrike going to get thrown out, but uh, KVH is salving up. Looking for that blink. I thought he was going to blink under there and throw the one more auto attack. That was all he needed. Is Invoker going to survive this? Oh, no, he doesn't. The very last tick is going to uh, drop him. Unfortunate. He had the salve. He could have survived that, but he thought he was going to be fine. Thought he was in the clear, but the level 2 dagger gets the kill, and KVH going to be happy with that uh, result there. So like I said, not having the uh, uh, just not having the health regen he needed to uh, sustain that Queen of Pain damage, and uh, the Invoker gets brought down there. So, Streelock farming up for himself and uh, going to try to illuminate down this creep wave, but uh, this Cloak Aura being stacked up here is making it very, very difficult for him to actually burst down this camp. I mean, you can, only, you can see there's only about 120-ish damage done to this creep wave, and uh, of course that gets regened up very quickly by the Unholy Aura, which is 6 health regen on every creep nearby. So, uh, with the help of the creep wave now, he might be able to deny out some XP, but uh, the, uh, the Keeper of the Light definitely not as strong a jungler as he was previous to this patch. And he's up on top. Shanks just farming away. He's uh, burned through all of his tangos. He's still got his salve left and the mango, so his health regen is pretty decent for dealing with this uh, this uh, Iron Shell spam. But the Soul Ring is out, so uh, Echo going to be able to uh, offer a lot more um, in terms of bringing this down. But engagement down on the bottom lane. I'm missing that. The uh, Keeper of the Light is going to be brought down first. And my Hyun, he's uh, getting... Well, he's getting bashed out a little bit there, but uh, the Slardar does get caught with the Searing Chains and... Uh, and my hound will be just fine to continue farming. Though he loses his Keeper of the Light, and that is not something you want to happen. Got it. He's thrown up on KVH here. Curious to see what he's going to do with this. Um, he could just go aggro on the Invoker again, but uh, KKY Baby has now got two points up in the Quas and uh, is uh, sitting on, I think, reasonable enough tools to deal with the Queen of Pain. So um, if Quap wants to just try to farm six and then maybe use that Haste Rune to get a gank on a side lane, that's probably going to be optimal. But uh, throws out the Haste Rune now, wants to get those bottle charges up, throws out a dagger onto the Invoker, and uh, the engagement's going to kind of uh, be a little bit stale from there on out. Reaper just trying to secure himself a little bit of XP up here while uh, Echo goes into the uh, top jungle to farm out that newly added hard camp. So, getting himself a little bit of extra gold. But Tusk may be in a little bit of trouble here as he gets caught out with the uh, snare, but not going to drop as uh, the Juggernaut was just not close enough to get off that uh, spin. I think if Jug was a little bit closer, that might have been a kill. KVH going for a Bottle Crow now as uh, he's realized he's uh, not doing as hot with uh, uh, in terms of his uh, regen. Just that little bit of damage from the Invoker over time ends up bringing him uh, a little bit low. Gonna bottle up and he'll have another rune in about 40 seconds to uh, get him up to, uh, up to a good health once again. Last hits, the Ember is beating out the uh, the Juggernaut just slightly by about four. Uh, Juggernaut obviously catching up just a little bit, but uh, there we go. Alright. Well played there as the Searing Chains catch out Yish, and then they uh, throw an Illuminate right over top of him. So, um, no one dropping down on the bottom lane there, but it did look like Tong Fu was ready to go aggro. They wanted to uh, see what they could do. Push their limits just a little bit and get a little bit of uh, blood on their hands, but... Uh, Queen of Pain making her way down towards the bottom rune. It is an illusion, not really a great ganking rune, but they still could use this if they wanted to. Queen of Pain is now 6 and has that uh, sonic wave, so anyone they jump on could potentially die. Just going to use the illusion rune for now. Sending the illusions off towards the other sides of the map. Maybe they try to uh, confuse out uh, Band of Misfits. Sending that uh, one illusion up there. Teleport down from Tusk, though. They want to find blood on the mid lane, but a uh, good snare gets caught out on KKY Baby, but they're healing him up with that uh, um, 
with the uh, pure flying flames so took the damage at first but it wasn't enough to nuke him down and uh, instead he walks away with a uh, net HP gain Gank gets dodged out here on bottom doesn't look like they saw the tusk but uh, backed up out of instinct and they were right to do so sacrifice out on the siege creep they're gonna catch my hyun bring him down pretty low he doesn't actually have his ulti to jump away from this and he might be in trouble here the searing change does catch out yish but are they going to be able to pursue one more auto attack flies out from the lich and that's going to be a kill magic wand to get the slithering crush out and now they've got the amplified damage straylock is going to follow very shortly thereafter and tongfu get themselves their fourth and fifth kills of the game radiant's bottom tower is under attack Oh, Echo gets jumped on with that Omni Slash and jukes into the trees, which might have been a mistake here, but wait, why? what? Shanks turned himself around and is going to get caught out here, caught inside of the uh, Ice Shards, and they're going to drop a wall, but the wall doesn't quite catch him. They give the Surge out to the Tuscar. He's going to have another spell in uh, about seven seconds if he can keep up the pressure on the Shanks, but uh, yeah, Stan King is there to help out as well and holds Reaper in place. The Slardar has rotated in as well. He's uh, rushing forward. And uh, the snowball goes out. They go over top of uh, the yeah goes over top of the Slardar, but ends up getting caught out anyways. As the Queen of Pain rotates in and picks off the Dark Seer, and the Slardar gets the kill on the Tusk. So another haste rune for KVH, getting those S4 runes and uh, making good use of them. And uh, that's going to give the sixth and seventh kills over to Tong Fu as well. So Band of Misfits just not finding what they need out of this laning phase. Now I do think they have a much uh, scarier late game with this Ember Spirit than they did last game, but uh, still, I mean, they're they're behind to a team that's uh, going to snowball really heavily. I mean, Slardar, Queen of Pain, Juggernaut, these are all very snowball -y heroes, so if they give up these uh, first these early kills, it's going to be very hard for uh, Band of Misfits to really make their way back into this game in any significant manner. Anyways, top lane looks like an engagement's going to come out here as the Queen of Pain has teleported up and uh, she's not moving forward quite yet. The Juggernaut's just going for a nice little spin. The Queen of Pain going to blink forward, gets a scream out onto the Tusk, but he snowballs and will follow KVH right back. Uh, she's got the Sonic Wave if she wants it, but I don't know if she's going to want to spend it. There she goes. She does end up using it and does catch the uh, Darkseer with it. If she wants to blink into the tree, she might kill him, but the Invoker is there to kind of deflect that pressure. And uh, KKY may be looking to see if he can find something out here, but uh, there's just no targets he can go on as the Queen of Pain blinks away and the Juggernaut has backed himself up. Down towards bottom, Slardar, he's making solid progress towards his Blink Dagger. 12, uh, 1,200 gold in his name right now. 3-0 and 1, and uh, he's uh, he's got a good healthy amount of last hits as well. So once he gets that, things are going to start to get really, really uncomfortable for uh, Tong Fu. Wait, one kill on the Radiant side. Where was that? Oh, Oracle was killed. When did Oracle die? Huh. Maybe it was a Sunstrike or something. I'm not sure. I, I completely missed that kill. I guess he must have died to Creeps because it uh, didn't give credit to anybody, anybody specific for this kill. But KVH in a lot of trouble here as he walks into five heroes. Cold Snap with the Snowball, with the this, with the that, and he gets dropped. It's two to eight is the uh, kill score here. And uh, first really big kill goes the way of Band of Misfits. And... With uh, this many heroes down to the bottom lane, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them shove this tower just a little bit, get up there and start knocking on the uh, doors of Tong Fu. Demand a response, make somebody uh, come for them, but uh, right now they've only got the three heroes. I uh, expected they might keep the uh, Invoker there, maybe throw out some alacrity hits on the tower, but uh, meanwhile, Shanks and Stan King working away on this top tower, bringing it down below a half, down to about 500 HP, and a few more points left to be lost, so... Um, they're working away at this, and they've got a fresh creep wave coming in. No response yet from Band of Misfits, and uh, they've got a TP coming in, but that TP is inevitably cancelled. And so uh, Tier 1 gets lost for uh, Band of Misfits, and they're just not putting enough pressure on bottom to uh, consider this an even trade. And they're going to move forward onto the Lich, maybe see if they can find a kill here. Um, getting really aggressive, but forced to jump away as uh, he realizes he might be in trouble here. Reaper goes in deep, gets the kill on the Lich, but is going to get locked down, and Oracle will claim the kill on Tusk. So 
Uh, trading the Tusk for the Lich, probably a pretty even trade, all things considered, but... Uh, yeah, they, uh, they still, like I said, didn't get the tower. The defense was good from Tong Fu, and uh, the tower advantage now lies in the favor of Tong Fu. So, uh, with their kill advantage, this could get a little bit scary off the bat, but uh, we'll see. Still lots of game left to be played. KVH does get a blink out there before that EMP claims his mana, and uh, he's got lots of stick charges left to keep him safe. And he's going to find a regen rune too, so beautiful for him. He's uh, going to be nice and happy with that. Juggernaut, where the heck finds a... Uh, Finds a stray Keeper of the Light in the jungle. Throws out an Omni Slash. Actually, didn't even use Omni Slash. That was just a... Uh, yeah, okay. That was just a uh, Snare Spin combo. Down on bottom, my hun. Looks like he might be in a little bit of trouble here. Moves forward to do a bit of damage and then zips back out. So, uh, well played there, but he's going to be forced to use his mango so that he has a little bit more mana to uh, sustain this lane. And just cannot move forward to get that safe farm that he wants. He is sitting second on the last hit charts at 56, so farming pretty efficiently here, but he's still not getting anywhere close to those BOTs that he really wants. And, uh, you know, he's just kind of being gated out of farm by that uh, Slardar aggression. Tusk goes for a dive in on the mid lane, finds the Oracle, but uh, once again, that's going to be an Oracle for a Tusk trade and Reaper. He has just had no fear about diving in for these free kills here. He's just going as ham as he can, trading his life for others over and over. And uh, unfortunately, it was a Lich and an Oracle, but if he was trading that for a Queen of Pain, a Juggernaut, these would absolutely be, uh, these would be absolutely worth it trades. Sentry Ward here to spot out the Lane Ward, and uh, looks like the Sentry Ward was dropped before they replenish this ward, so a full 7 minute ward is going to go down here. Really good for uh, Tong Fu, making sure that that offlane is safe for them. Echo now has his mechanism up, making his way over to the hard camp to try to farm that up, but is not there as he will find, and uh, he might have to go for a Yogg back to base to uh, replenish some of his resources, get some mana, grab a TP scroll, so that he can be there for some of these fights. Engagement going out on the bottom lane here, EMP is going to land, and Yish is going to be protected by the uh, for, uh, for, uh, the False Promise. <laughs> Oracle abilities, man. Alright, Tusk going to be traded for Slardar, and uh, maybe Stan King going to go down as well? No, he makes his way back out of that, and uh, should be just fine. Actually, that wasn't... Queen of Pain goes for a jump in here, throws out the Sonic Wave, gonna get the Invoker first. Now going for my and they're trying to bring him down, but those uh, Purifying Flames heals are starting to bring him back up. He's trying to juke around the trees however he can. He's gonna make his way back in, tries to get the Lich, but it's not gonna happen, and the Nuke on the Purifying Flames is gonna bring him down. So Stan King gets the kill there, and Tobushu, uh, Tuboshu is gonna survive and make his way back to base where he'll pick up his Urn of Shadows. Juggernaut, meanwhile, claims the mid tower and uh, is starting to work towards a Battle Fury. He has that Perseverance up and only needs about 160 more gold until he gets the full Battle Fury himself. KBH finds himself a Keeper of the Light, and this is gonna be a dead Straylock. Yeah, he tries to get uh, that Blinding Light out to maybe keep himself alive a little bit longer, but uh, KBH was pretty much guaranteed that kill and uh, is now more than halfway towards his Orchid. Now actually latched up here, not going to be able to blink out quite yet. Blinks into the trees, but uh, doesn't have a TP for another second, and Maihyun not going to be able to go in there. Oh, the tornado catches him! This Queen of Pain is in a lot of trouble, has a blink in another second, but they're going to get the Deafening Blast to vacuum back out. He blinks forward, they know he's there though, they're going to drop a wall, look for it, and uh, still no no points in W from uh, Maihyun, which is really interesting, but they find him in the Darkseer. Ion Shell is going to burn down the Queen of Pain, so um, really unfortunate fortunate play there. I think uh, KBH just stood, uh, stayed around a little bit too long and uh, unfortunately unable to blink during the duration of that Searing Chains. Blink Dagger now up on Yish, so he's got uh, he's got what he needs to be able to start making these uh, high impact plays around the map, locking down some of these mobile heroes like the Ember Spirit and the Invoker, and uh, looks like he might be going for a four staff next with the Ring of Regen. Bottom tower now going to start facing some pressure. They got four heroes ready to go, and uh, My Hyun is is ready to make this even happen. Curious though, he actually goes for the phase boots um, instead of going for the uh, full travels. I kind of expected him to go for the travels the way he was farming. He was up to almost a thousand gold without having bought the uh, phase boots themselves. But they're going to go in on Yish. They want to try to bring him down, but uh, he's going to be helped out a little bit there by the Oracle and uh, Juggernaut comes in, drops out the Omni Slash, and gets the tusk. 
right off the bat. The Lich ulti is bouncing around, but Lich is going to fall as the Invoker brawls away with him. KBH jumps in, but gets bounced out by the Connell Blinding Light. And now, looking for a stun on KKY Baby. They find it, and there we go. With the Sonic Wave, Invoker is brought down. Two for one engagement so far. My gun. Oh, he gets a jump away back to his remnant in the trees, and he's going to go for a TP out. Should be able to fill up his bottle and then come back if he wants to continue fighting. But uh, that is a very uncomfortable proposition for him. Blink up in one second from the uh, Slaughter, and they don't even need the Slithering Crush. They get the Keeper of the Light and will TP out. So it looks like that was a total 3 for 1 engagement. But uh, yeah, we saw the Tusk, the Keeper, and the Invoker all die in exchange for nothing but the Lich. So definitely a good uh, brawl for Tongfu there. They're happy with what they got. And uh, this Tusk just once again trading his life over and over and over and uh, in some scenarios it's been worth it but in others it just really hasn't and uh, you can see his score i mean two seven three it's all right he's gotten some kills he's made some plays but the amount that he's giving back to tong fu is uh is not something i'm sure he's happy with KVH now rotating up towards top. He's got about 100 gold left to go on that Orchid. And once he gets that, it's going to be really easy for them to start holding down these heroes, as I said before. I mean, they've got the initiation from the Slardar, but if they can get that follow-up with an Orchid to keep the uh, Ember locked down, or uh, the Darkseer, or even the Invoker, that's really going to be what they want. Now, uh, Reaper and Echo might be in a little bit of trouble here as the uh, Slardar comes in, gets a beautiful two-man crush. Reaper definitely going to go down here. He's uh, going to snowball out to stall it just for a little bit, but the Juggernaut is there. Queen of Pain actually gets the last hit with her auto attack, but uh, the Darkseer does manage to TP out, so sort of good for the Darkseer, but uh, they were just out of position in the first place, and uh, unfortunately the Tusk pays the toll with his eighth death of the game. So uh, not feeling good about that. Drums now completed on the Ember Spirit, so not going for any of these uh, heavy farming items, not going for the boost travel, not going for the Battle Fury quite yet. Uh, we'll probably see him go into the Battle Fury from here. That tends to be the typical build, um, even if you go for the Phase Boots drums. You get that movement speed up, you get that kind of uh, those brawling stats for the early game, and then you go directly into the Battle Fury so that you can start cleaving out the late game. But we'll see. There are other choices to be made. I've seen some Embers with this uh, same build go straight for a Desolator instead of uh, going for the Cleave. Uh, crush in on KKY Baby. They're going to try to bring him down, but the Tusk saves him for just a moment. Looks like he will be brought down eventually, but this might be turned into a two-for-one engagement. Queen of Pain tries to get blink, uh, tries to blink out, but gets caught in the trees and is going to get jumped on. The Ember Spirit gets himself a double kill, so definitely not worth it for Tong Fu as they give up two of their highest net worth heroes in exchange for a couple kills on the Ember Spirit. So Ember is immediately going to start working in towards that uh, Battle Fury, as I said, debating what the build might be for him, but he's now got that Claymore, so um, that's probably safe to call as uh, the next item and they're going to move in towards this tier 2 tower actually no they're going to back away thought they'd at least jump in and do some chip damage they probably could have done three four hundred damage and then gotten out safely but uh instead going to back off and go for a smoke and uh was this spotted by any of the dire wards it was not so they're not going to know that this is coming and uh stan king on his own in the middle river oh jeez <laughs> There was no, uh, yeah, there's no haste particle on him. I thought for a second he just moved that fast. I was like, what? What is this hero? But anyways, gank coming in towards the bottom lane. They're going to go for a quick snowball in here. And Tuboshu, he's going to be the first death. Absolutely nothing to uh, question there. Yish trying to uh, get out of this. Might actually make it out. Juggernaut going for the Omni Slash out. But uh, where's the Ember Spirit? He's just diving all over the place. He's going to get caught out here by the Orchid. Can they bring him down? They just need a little bit more damage, and Yish, blinking forward, will get the Ember Spirit. Uh, Tusk, of course, was the first casualty of that fight once again, so uh, Tusk and Ember for the Lich. Not a great exchange there, especially considering that that was a uh, surprise smoke gank underneath the tower there, but thankfully the rotations just naturally happened to be coming that direction from Tong Fu, and they were able to re-engage that very quickly. They head directly into the Roche Pit, and with that Amplified damage, we'll be bringing this Roche, uh, Roche down in a matter of seconds. No question about that, and Illuminate flies in the pit, but whatever. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. Allergies. It's the cat, man, it's the cat. <laughs> He's adorable and I love him, but he makes me sneeze like crazy. Team's taking first Roshan kill. I have a 72% win rate historically. That's, that's pretty telling statistic. I'm curious how that stat changes as uh, duration of games goes on, though. Like, whether that uh, Roshan is at, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, whether it's at 30 to 40. Because I imagine at 40 minutes, if the first Roshan goes down, it's not as big a swing 
as uh, would have been assumed otherwise. But uh, Yish goes for a blink in on the top lane, trying to help out his Juggernaut, but doesn't get the four stab all the way through the trees like he would have hoped for, and uh, might end up getting dropped here. He's trying to run away, gets vacuum back, and uh, Echo is going to be the one to get that kill there. They get the Orchid out onto the uh, Ember Spirit. He's trying to run away from this, but the uh, Chain Frost is going to chase him down. So Slardar for Ember Spirit so far, and the Tusk is in deep with the. Uh, Darks here. I just don't see them making a fight out of this, and uh, Echo is going to go down. Four heroes down in exchange for the Slardar, so, uh, yeah, really, really sloppy engagement there, and they just had too many heroes too far forward, and, uh, you know, they got the Slardar, and they thought they could continue fighting, but, uh, just wasn't the case as the cavalry came in, and that, uh, Juggernaut went to work. Now sitting on a Battle Fury, a Yasha, and the Aegis of the Immortal. So this uh, Jug is just stacked. 605 on Shanks, and uh, he's having a much higher contribution to this game than he was the last uh, that Druid game. Like I said, he spent uh, the majority of the game just farming away while KVH did all the work. But uh, KVH, relatively high impact this game as well. I mean, he's got... Uh, He's 8, 3, and 8, and uh, has been moving around the map really strongly, using that uh, Orchid to his advantage, making sure that that Ember Spirit is locked down in every single fight. And uh, Ember just really has no answer to this, and we might actually see Ember take a fall here if KBH can lock him down with that Orchid. Had a second left on the cooldown, though, so not able to get that out right off the bat, but... Yeah, Ember, I mean, he's trying to go for the Battle Fury, but that's going to mean that it's going to take him probably another 12 minutes or so before he finishes the Battle Fury and gets a Manta, which will keep him safe from working. Up until then, he's going to keep jumping into fights and just getting shut down by this Queen of Pain. So it's really a risky game he's playing with this build, and, uh, you know, it's it's almost to a point where, like, you see that Orchid coming, you have to immediately switch your build. Go for the Manta, keep yourself safe, and then hope that late game you can start to come back with the damage items. Because damage items aren't going to mean jack if you can't use Slate of Fist in a fight. Alright, Smoke popped out here and they're going to pop a recall out onto the Ember Spirit. So they want to go as 5, maybe make their way over towards the mid lane, try to find Shanks, but uh, he's all the way heading down into his uh, or into the uh, opposing team's jungle where his team is waiting with open arms. So they're going to venture into the jungle here, but this is going to be a massively fruitless endeavor and uh, just nothing to be gained from the smoke tank. They're going to pop a ward, and uh, Ember's going to head back to farming, but uh, in reality, they've gained next to nothing and uh, probably wasted quite a significant amount of time while Tong Fu has moved down towards bottom and Shanks is starting to work away at this tower. Down sub 500 HP, and it doesn't look like it's going to be defended. The uh, Fortify is going to go out, but... I don't think they're going to make a maneuver to actually save this tower. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower. I'm going to try to trade this out. They're doing a little bit of damage on the top tier too, but it really doesn't matter. The TP comes in and they realize that they can't fight, so they're going to take off. Reaper waves goodbye as he TPs back out, and uh, everybody else will make their way into the trees and uh, make for a quick and safe escape. But... Uh, that's going to be it. A tower traded for absolutely nothing and a smoke gank that is completely fruitless from uh, Band of Misfits. So, not feeling good about what they've got going for them right now. Uh, My Hun still looking for about 1500 gold before he uh, can finish up that Battle Fury. Uh, he will have a significant amount of damage once he does get that up. But uh, once again, whether or not he can actually make that uh, happen and avoid getting orchided in every single fight is another question. This Queen of Pain is going to have her eyes on him for sure. And she's now got that BKB to make sure that she can't be locked down herself by the Invoker or uh, anything else. So, Crush getting caught out here onto Echo, and uh, all they need is a Snare, a Bash, anything, and they're looking for him. He uh, had an Invis rune, I think, or uh, was that a Glimmer Cape or something? Yeah, I think that was an Invis rune, but uh, he was spotted out by the uh, Amplified damage anyways. Tusk going to try to snowball out, making his way away, but he is getting just beaten down, and uh, Yish jumps in once again, another kill, and on, meanwhile, on the other side of the map, the Keeper of the Light got picked off. I don't even know who killed him. What was that? Juggernaut, yeah, so Juggernaut just found him. Was that a, yeah, Omni Slash was used, and uh, he's now got a Blink Dagger as well, so Juggernaut going for that uh, Blink build. Making sure that he's got that uh, initiation factor. So everyone on Tong Fu, really, really aggressive right now. I mean, you got the Blink Dagger, the Force Staff, and the Slardar. Of course, Queen of Pain already has her built-in Blink. And uh, now has the BKB to make sure that she's safe and no matter what she does. And the Juggernaut, of course, has the Blink Dagger with that Manta to get him out of any trouble that he ends up in. Blink Crush just barely misses on the Stray Lock, but they did see him and... Uh, just a little bit short on that blink range. I think he actually missed the uh, secret blink range, the uh, little bit of an extra blink. And uh, I think if he had hit that, that would have been a kill. But uh, either way, Keeper of the Light 
manages to escape. He's going to start spamming out the Illuminate to try to hold, uh, hold these waves off of the base, but doesn't matter. They get the Tier 2 tower, and uh, Tong Fu is happy with what they've got now. Probably going to wait around, farm up a little bit, and then go for the next Roche. They've got about two minutes before they find out what the uh, remaining timer is, or before we find out what the remaining timer is. So we'll see what that is, but uh, for now, they're happy to just dominate the map. And look at their aggressive wards. I mean, if we look at uh, the map vision from the Dire side, they can see this whole expanse of the map. They can see everything, um, every entrance to the enemy jungle. They can see everything that's going on on uh, Band of Misfits' side. And, uh, of course, their heroes are just giving them vision in their own jungle because they're farming up as much as they want. Um, if you jump over to the other side of the field though, on the Band of Misfits side, you can see on the map here, like, their vision is extremely limited. They see a little bit in the river here, they see where the creep wave is, but they have no vision of their own jungle and they're probably terrified to walk in here. KKY actually is just going to go ham on his own, going to go for a little bit of a waltz through his own jungle, but uh, I mean there's nothing guaranteeing that he's safe here. Now the question in the chat, if this is a BO3, this is a best of five. Um, and we are in game number two now. Uh, actually, I should have uh, thrown up the series markers on uh, the top. I uh, completely forgot to do that, but uh, this is a best of five. Tong Fu North America is up one game um, at the moment, and uh, looking like they're probably going to take game number two. I'm not going to say anything definitive yet, because uh, Ember Spirit and uh, Keeper of the Light are very good high ground defenders, but as it stands, it looks like uh, something could... Um, it looks like uh, Tong Fu might be the ones to take this. Uh, I'm actually going to throw that into the stream title here. Best of five. There we go. Alright, Smoke Gank coming in here from Tong Fu. So, looking for blood. I think they know that the Dark Seer is down there. There was a Ion Shell on that wave. So uh, maybe they find him here, but I don't... Yeah, Smoke Pops, so they should know that he's in the trees somewhere. Goes for a blind crush, but uh, not going to find where Echo's hiding here. So uh, Echo, I don't know if he even realizes that there's people next to him. He does now that Stan King's out, but uh, oh my god. How do they know? Okay, I think they were bringing in their smokes one by one to try to figure out where they were sitting, and it uh, <laughs> doesn't end up catching uh, the... Um, they don't end up catching the Darks here. He gets out. And uh, actually, ward coverage has uh, improved from uh, Band of Misfits. They used that little bit of an opportunity there to throw up a couple extra wards. So they got one here in the Roche area. Uh, they got one over the middle of the river. So they now have a little bit of a better idea what's going on. And you can see them starting to rotate over towards this Roshan, which is being done now by uh, Tong Fu. But uh, Tong Fu leaves right as soon as they sense a little bit of danger coming in. And... Uh, then Misfits know that they're in the neighborhood. They saw the amp damage on the Roche. They saw that the health, health was low. So they're going to try to keep as many heroes around here as they can. But uh, backing out for now as they see the Queen of Pain on mid. Queen of Pain blinks away from mid. My Hun now has picked up that Blade of Alacrity, so it looks like he's trying to head towards the Manta style now, which uh, is definitely the right call. He needs that to make sure that he doesn't die to this Queen of Pain, but uh, as of now, he's uh, surviving pretty well. He's 2, 4, and 6. He has a double damage, but uh, Roshan goes down extremely quickly. Once again, the amp damage secures that kill for them, and they're going to turn this right into a fight, blinking in on Fear the Reaper and brings him down almost immediately. The wall goes out, but the vacuum does not hit as the BKBs are charged up. Three heroes down on the side of Band of Misfits right now. Mahyun trying to fight this up. He gets ends up blinking out. Can they chase him up? I don't think so. Heal's going to come out onto Yish, make sure that he can uh, recover in time for the fight, but I think with the uh, Aegis not having been popped there, and uh, all the momentum they do have, they're going to head straight for high ground, start pushing in on this mid-tier 3. Alright. Is Yish really going for a Battle Fury right now? Is that... Is there any other item that builds in from these? Yeah, he's, he's going for a Battle Fury. <laughs> Battle Fury Slider, all right. Uh, honestly, I think that might just be clowning around a little bit, but uh, either way. Shang's fearing absolutely nothing here, even with the uh, tower um, 
Yeah, even with the tower regening, he just sits there with his healing ward up and uh, tanks away at the tower. He's got his uh, Aegis, so he really doesn't fear anything at this point. Uh, I'm actually curious why they're not just walking up there and taking that last hit on the tower. Nothing really stopping them from doing it, but uh, looks like they're going to back out for now and uh, just push out the other waves. I guess their other waves are kind of shoved back a little, um, a little ways, so... Gem of True Sight now up on this Lich, and so they've removed all of the vision from the map. I mean, once again, if we jump back to Band of Misfits' uh, vision here, you can see they see nothing in their jungle, and they see nothing up here. So, very scared to move out of their base right now. They're just sitting at the outskirts, just uh, trying to uh, burst out any waves that come their way. But uh, right now, if we jump back over towards uh, Tong Fu's side, you can see, once again, they've got a nice aggressive ward spotting out the mid lane. They've got a ward in the jungle to make sure nobody's farming. And I think this one was from a little while ago when they were doing the Roshan, but... Uh, Good coverage on the map so far, and uh, Tong Fu making sure that they keep this lead and they keep it safely. Eight zero seven on the struggle. Not a single death this game, and uh, he's sitting on two hundred and eighty-four last hits. So a very wealthy juggernaut, five k above the next closest hero, um, which is also on his team, who is also 5k above the next closest hero, who is also on their team. So uh, net worth definitely in the uh, advantage of Tong Fu. I mean, it, I don't think we even need to look at the graphs, but if you want to check him out, 30,000 in terms of uh, uh, XP and 25,000 in terms of net worth. So no question that uh, Tong Fu is taking this game by storm at the moment. Blinding Light stalling out this push just a little bit, but uh, the heroes focusing different racks, it doesn't even matter at this point. There's not much that uh, BM can do to prevent them from just going ham. And they're going to try to make an initiation out here, but Shanks just working it down in a really good wall vacuum. Maybe able to turn this fight, but it's just not doing anything here. The BKBs are popped out. Shanks is chasing down Reaper. The Darkseer is dead right off the bat. Blink forward by Yish. And they bring down the Darkseer as well. The Invoker and the Keeper of the Light have kept themselves alive. And the Ember Spirit jumped out earlier on. But good game, well played is going to be called. So a little bit demoralized after that uh, aggressive push. And uh, of course that huge net worth advantage. Cannot uh, discount that. So that's going to be the end of the game there. So Tong Fu North America takes game number two in this best of five series. So uh, going on to match point here, we're going to have one more game to determine who is going to be our UGC grand finalist victors. The winner of this, uh, well, if uh, if Tong Fu win this next match, they're going to be taking home 500 US dollars. So 100 bucks a person, definitely not a shabby prize. So uh, looking forward to that. I'm going to throw it to the overlay. We're going to get the next lobby up and we'll be into the next game in just a few moments. So stay tuned, stick around and share the stream with your friends. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll be right back.